Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but Was grace that taught my heart to feel, and a grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace. The hour I first believed When we've been there Ten thousand years Bright shining as the sun with no less days to sing God's praise than when we first be. God is our refuge and our strength. He is a very present help in times of difficulty and trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Friends, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. And my name is David Peel. I'm the pastor of the United Methodist Church of Elmwood. Today, we gather at this sad hour to remember and to celebrate a great, great life and to pay our final respects as we lay to rest John F. Pettit II. Seventy years of age, of Elmwood, John passed away at 10.30 a.m. on Thursday, December 31st, 2020, at Unity Point Methodist Hospital in Peoria. He was surrounded by his wife and his daughters. John was born on February 23rd, 1950, in Galesburg to John and Dorothy Pettit. He married Jerry Barton on January 26th, 1973 in Galesburg. John is survived by his wife and his two children, Tammy and Gilmore. I was gonna, knew I was going to destroy, <laughs> destroy that. Mika, two brothers, George and Greg, one sister, Carolyn, and 10, count them, 10 grandchildren. John is preceded in death by his parents, his two children, Kimmy, and Sergeant First Class Retired John F. Pettit III, and one sister, Dottie. May God grant us grace that in the pain we are experiencing, we may find comfort. In the sorrow we hold, we may find hope. And in, the, and in death, we may find the promise and the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray. O oh God, who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Show us now your grace that as we face the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Lord God, speak to us once more of your solemn message of life and of death. Comfort this family and all who grieve this day. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are ended, enable us to die as those who go forth to live. So that living or dying, our life may be in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen, amen. and amen. And now, brothers and sisters, 
Connor will be sharing a scripture from Luke 15 for us right now. Shortly before um, my grandfather's passing, the Lord saw fit to inspire my, my father to read the story of the prodigal son to him. And I feel inspired to do the same for you today. The story of the prodigal son is about a man who, despite being loved by his father, wished to go out into the world and seek his own fortunes. And upon going out and receiving the blessing of his father, experienced many trials and tribulations and came to a point where he felt he had to return, but felt unworthy. And so he said, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. I know now that my grandfather is in heaven celebrating his salvation and finally being home. Thank you. Another scripture the family shared is from Isaiah 43, verses 2 through 5. This is what God's word says. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, I will not, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who is your Savior. You are precious and honored in my sight, and I love you. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. The scripture I have chose for this morning as well is from Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4. You have been raised to life with Christ. Now set your heart on what is in heaven, where Christ rules at God's right side, Aim high. Think about what is up there, not about what is here on earth. You died, which means that your life is hidden with Christ, who sits beside God. Christ gives meaning to your life, and when he appears, you will also appear with him in glory. May God now add his blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the acting out of his words. Amen and amen. At this time, if the family, is there any family that would like to share, if you would like to at this opportunity, I invite you. If you do not wish to at this time, that is okay. But if you would, if you would come forward. Okay. So where do we begin today? It's a good question. For you, the family, the boat, continues to rock. The waves buffet against the side of the walls of the boat, and when it comes to John, there is so much that can be said today. What we do each day will continue to help us to remember John and to celebrate his life. The slogan from the Air Force is simply, aim high. And without a doubt, John modeled that slogan in his own life, and in so many different ways, he aimed high. Big John, as he was often called, 
was a simple man that held the highest of values, family first, hard work, perseverance, strength, and he modeled integrity. Those values helped John to aim high in all the areas of his life. And through his 70 years here on this earth, John developed many loves, and especially for his wife, Jerry. For nearly 48 years, they together raised a family. Together, these two aimed high. And honestly, there were moments in their life when that was difficult to look up. The tragic loss of their two children, it seemed overwhelming at times and even hopeless at times. Yet together, they held on to each other. The family held on to them and the church held on to them. And most of all, God held them. Together, they found God's love continuing to surround them, support them, and bringing them comfort each day. Now, other areas of John's life was filled with many things. He enjoyed those 1950s and 60s music. He uh, enjoyed the Partridge family. I'm still trying to figure that one out. <laughs> the music from the movie Grease, and I understand John, John liked Abba, or Abba. I call it Abba, but our Abba, either one. I'm a big Abba fan. But I'm not quite sure how I can picture John rocking out to Mamma Mia or Dancing Queen. <laughs> Maybe that's just something better left that we don't know. <laughs> but through his love for college football and for mugs and for shot glasses and for hats and for anything related and memorabilia to his family, he collected and treasured all of those things. John always aimed high when it came to our American veterans and or even the, the Pettit Scholarship, which he held in such high esteem. That was something that was very close to his heart. And most definitely, John's loving heart was always for his children and his grandchildren. You could always find him and Jerry in the stands watching and cheering and sometimes correcting those referees when it came to calls against his grandchildren, or better known as grandbrats, as he called them. These small, small type people, as he referred to them often, they were the main reason he aimed high. In many ways, John was modeling the ideals that the Apostle Paul states here in Colossians, where he says, set your hearts on what is in heaven. Paul says, aim high. Think about what is up there. Paul simply, I think, would say to us today, look up, aim high. Now, there were moments, just like any human being, where there were struggles and there was difficulties along that journey. And sometimes it was happenstance, and sometimes it was the things that we caused ourselves or the problems, and sometimes it was a misunderstanding. But one thing was for certain, somehow or another, you might find yourself on John's special list, where he would tell you by saying that you're on my, I won't say it, list. <laughs> I'll bleep it in later. <laughs> I also believe however you got on that list, even though he may have threatened to smack you or he would tell you to shut the you-know-what up, <laughs> John always aimed high, and I don't think you were on that list very long. I think those barking spiders might have been his form of revenge, <laughs> just to pay you back. <laughs> but one thing is true, you grandchildren always kept him on his toes, and he would never have changed the moment of it for all the world. The reading from the scripture from the prodigal son today tells the story of a wayward child that wanders away and finds his way back home to the grace and to the mercy of his father's love. And John found that love in Jesus Christ and he welcomed him into his heart and he knew him as his savior. And just like that wandering son came home not to ridicule, not to scorn, not to rebuke, not to judgment, but he came home to find grace and mercy and love and forgiveness. And the prodigal son story is not about that son who ran away. And it's not about, I encourage you to read the rest of the story about his older brother who stayed home and took care of business and followed the rules. It's really about God's grace and love, about a father who ran, not away, but to his child. 
You know, you can't be bad enough to lose God's love, and you can't be good enough to get that love of God to love you even more. Now, just a little side note here. Do you know who was the most disappointed one when the prodigal son returned home? I encourage you to go and read the rest of the story, but I'll give you a spoiler alert. To me, the most disappointed one in that whole story was the fatted calf. <laughs> Life can be filled with many disappointments. And as the writer of Isaiah 43 refers to them as moments where we feel overwhelmed, where the waters are overcoming us and rushing over us, or they buffeting against the boat or attempting to consume us, God reminds us that we will not be drowned and we will not be scorched by that fire. God says, I am the one who saves you and I am the one who loves you. And I think that's why John always aimed high. Because deep down, he knew there was somebody who would care for us in our most troubled and difficult times. So let me conclude by saying my encouragement to you today is simply this. The next time you are at a sporting event, event that one of you are involved in or going to watch, take a look up into the bleachers or maybe out along the sidelines. I think one way or another, I believe you'll see him there. At least he don't have to drive 95 miles an hour to get there. But I encourage you to remember and don't forget just how proud he is of all of you, how much he loved you in his own special way. For all you've accomplished, for all that you have been through, and for all the things that you will do, John loved you, and he will be cheering for you. I encourage you to remember the story of the prodigal son for your own life, and remember that no matter where you are, the Father is looking for you and will not run from you, but to you. And if you feel like you're a long ways from home, the Father is there ready to welcome you home. Remember the words of Isaiah 43 as well. And even though the boat seems to be rocking, I encourage you to remember who is in the boat with you. And when you feel overwhelmed or it's too much to bear, remember God is with us. And just as John is with God and those family members who have gone before and he is celebrating that joyous moment, someday we will be reunited. And this is all because of God's love through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Always aim high. Amen, amen. and amen. Let us pray. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, John F. Pettit II. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, a soldier of your army. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. And Father, may your comfort surround us with hope and peace until the day we are reunited. Help us to find faith and believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who gives us the way to heaven, who prepares that place for us even now. And so as we prepare to go and lay our brother to rest, let us trust in God's peace and love. Amen and amen. I encourage you to remain seated as a special performance on bagpipes will be presented. <laughs>
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe, who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Death is never easy, but our Christian faith teaches us that death is only the beginning of eternal life, a life that is God's promise to all who believe and trust in him. The word of God reminds us, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. He leads me beside the still waters. Those waters sometimes are pretty stirred and pretty troubled. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and my cup runs to overflowing as you anoint my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our refuge and our strength, that you are ever close to those that mourn. We pray that you will give us the help and wisdom that we need at this time as we face the task of living without our loved one. We pray that you will be a special comfort to uplift and care for all those that will feel this great loss. Help us to remember that although we are separated for a time, we will rejoice one day when we stand together in your presence, Lord. And so now in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commit our brother in faith, John Pettit II. We commit his remains to their final resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. With the promise of your word, Lord, we will never be alone and the risen Lord Jesus Christ will walk with us forever. Together we praise you, Father and God of all mercies and bringer of all comfort, as we ask that you would look graciously upon those who are in sorrow and those that mourn, that casting all their cares on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray in the way Jesus has taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And now may God's peace rest upon you. Amen and amen. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red flare the bombs bursting that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land